<laughs> so here we are with the cord we are done it's being delivered today to the client um, lots of stuff happened with this vehicle over the last six seven eight months that's been with us first off it's a front-wheel drive car so it caused a bunch of challenges for us to kind of get a power plant here uh, when i first kind of envisioned this whole thing i was thinking Obviously we want to go with a Tesla motor because they're very reliable and we know a lot about, about them here and how they work. So we actually use that as a transaxle up front, kind of like the Mercedes and the RAV4 does. But it just doesn't fit between these frame rails. So this is a great time for us to showcase some of our new products. So we have a large drive unit divorce kit is what we call it. And that allows you to remove the actual inverter from the LDU and basically put it within reason wherever you want. So as you can see here, it's kind of our crown jewel. We have the inverter sitting right front and center so when the hood comes up it's a very beautiful showpiece people could talk about it once again evs are mostly boring to me so let's take the boring out and give something to look at for everybody so we used our uh our our, our kit to do that and it's really neat too because we've been selling them we just haven't been able to install one ourselves in any build that we've done so far so we thought that this would be a perfect opportunity to showcase some of those new products so we have the divorce kit sitting on top of, of the ldu here we also are using our coolant bypass kit. So as some of you know, the large drive units have tendencies to leak and cause lots of problems and basically render, render themselves useless and destroy themselves from the inside out. We designed a kit to bypass that fluid so you no longer destroy the large drive unit from Tesla. So that's also installed in this, uh, this car here. And uh, we have our contactor box. This is something that we're very proud of. It's something we launched last year and it's been selling like hotcakes. Um, it has basically all the electronic components you'll need to run a, a vehicle like this with a high voltage, um, all your charging, all your auxiliaries, lots of fuses, um, your current collectors, everything is packaged very nicely in a billet box that's fully waterproof. All of our new uh, systems are on this car. We are using some new things from AEM. The VCO 275 is on this vehicle. I think this is one of the only running vehicles or one of the first running vehicles with the VCU 275 from AEM. So that's now installed. Lots of new features on that one as well. Um, everything here from the Dutchman axles was fabricated, you know, basically for this vehicle. We have three battery boxes in this car, one here in the firewall, one underneath the belly, and one where the old gas tank used to be. So we try to sp spread out the load, balance the car really well. Everything basically bolted up. We welded in just a few items, some frame rails underneath to capture the batteries. Up front, we put a few cross members in to kind of capture the motor and the battery. But other than that, we did not cut away anything from this car. There was a couple small places in the frame that we had to like put a notch in just to get a tube through. But other than that, this car has been preserved 100%. So if the client ever wants to decide to put a gas motor back in it, we haven't really done much to it to prevent that from happening. So very proud of this build. We're way ahead of SEMA here. Um, we got another month left before SEMA, a little over a month, and we're done um, for now. Car's gonna come back to us later for some minor touches. We got some BMS stuff that we wanna program and take a look a little further into. But other than that, we got power steering, power brakes, upgraded drivetrain with a large drive unit with our uh, divorce kit. Uh, we have the coolant bypass kit in this thing, all new batteries, it's 75 kilowatts, so it'll give the, uh, the customer tons of range, at least 150 miles for cruising. And um, after now driving this car for a little over 100 miles, it is performed flawlessly. It's a beautiful car to drive. Probably one of my favorite builds I've ever been a part of. Um, also in this car, we did do a full panel, all new gauges. It's fully CAN bust. Will did a tremendous job from Buckwired on the dash of this thing using the speed hut gauges. Thank you guys so much for that as well. They're all customized for this vehicle and they look gorgeous. Hey guys, I'm Will and I have a company called Buck Wired and I like to do wiring. Um, one of the things that I helped design, uh, configure and wire was this awesome gauge cluster that is in this green flash. Um, this thing had obviously some analog gauges that uh, depended on wheel speed sensors and things like that. So we adapted all that to the newer technologies um, like CAN bus and GPS signals in order to have these, uh, all these functional and really classic looking inside this EV conversion. 
first and foremost, the most important things you need to monitor is your state of charge, uh, how much juice you have left in the pack, um, your speed that you're going, and a couple of temperatures, and just kind of things to monitor as you're uh, charging or discharging your pack. So we got our state of charge gauge here, front and center. We have a GPS-based um, speedometer that goes all the way up to 120, because that's about how fast this car went with its stock ice components. Um, and then we have our motor RPMs and our motor temperatures. Both of those needles should go up and down together. The faster you spin it, the more the, the uh, temperature is going to rise. We got our power kilowatts drawn from the motor, and then we have battery temperatures. And one thing I want to point out is we have developed a really good relationship with Speed Hut, and their art department does a really, really good job taking your cues, taking your design wants and needs, and implementing it. And we have all these warning colors and warning lights that really, really stand out um, as a good, good gauge that gives you all that you need um, on a simple display that's easy to read. So this turned out awesome. Uh, this whole bezel is, is hand turned to keep that machine turn aesthetic that the original bezel for all of these gauges had. Um, we have a few blank spaces for components that aren't needed anymore, um, and they were able to just fill those in. We use Senka Send to send them a water jet pattern. They send it over here in 316 stainless steel. We got it in hand and sent it off to Hot Dogs Customs, and he hand turned it to give it that machine turn finish and it just really finished this off and kept it looking as classic and awesome as it is. So aside from the gauges, we had a couple of other things to incorporate in here and some of it's temporary um, and it's gonna be readdressed. We have our drive and our reverse right here and then all the way over here is neutral. So um, when you start this thing up, there is a Bluetooth app that you can use, but when you don't wanna be getting a ticket for ha uh, having a handheld device, you can press these buttons and there's actually LED feedbacks. Like when you press drive, it'll light up green. When you press reverse, it'll light up red. And then I believe white is our neutral button over here. Um, we work with a company called Billet Automotive. They're over in Australia and they will um, help us customize some push buttons. This will actually be a hazard button when all is said and done. This will be a regen, enable and disable. And we'll figure something out for this guy. Since we don't have these buttons, we're actually going to adapt the drive select into this uh, OE uh, shifter that used to be how this thing changed gears. You select what gear you have, you push in the clutch, and this thing would shift to its gear for you. Uh, really cool old technology. Kind of bummed to see that aspect go, but it's going to be really fun to integrate this into uh, our T2C and selecting which drive we want. So. Will and Johnny and, and Eddie B and everybody else did a great job like fitting the components in um, and that was kind of my job to, to hook them up together and make them work so it's hard to point out a lot of the wiring stuff because I've kept most of it as, as hidden as I can right um, but I think that's a good thing in fact you can't see too many of the uh, of the low voltage wires is, is I hope means I did a good job and then all the low uh, all the high voltage um, wiring also I think looks some of the stuff has to be visible. I think the stuff that has to be visible looks nice. It looks correct. It looks like it's supposed to be there. And the same with the plumbing too. You see some of the plumbing, but it all looks nice and straight up and down. And I mean, today we were trying to figure out what we we're going to do with uh, the inside of these, the supercharger. What was the exhaust? And yeah, it's little stuff like nice plastic edging around them. There's a, a lot more little finishing touches like that that we still have to do. Um, but little stuff like that just adds so much. All right, so I spent a lot of time under the dash, obviously putting the VCU in, putting the fuse box in, all of that, all that lives under here. Uh, Rex from Rex Upholstery also spent a lot of time in this car and under the dash. This whole interior has been totally refreshed. Uh, he's put in floors, you know, all the side panels, all the kick panels, everything is brand new and they all hug all the new components that we put in. They hug the new throttle pedal and everything like beautifully. So thanks Rex. So talking a little finishing touches, uh, one of the last things that, that sells it as an electric car is obviously the, the charge port. So yeah, it, that last 10% of a project has taken us, it always takes you 50% of the time, but we're right there now, it's, it's, it's becoming a real car. So we're here with Fred Waterfall. Fred has been in charge of this vehicle on the simple green side. Uh, it's been a pleasure to work with Fred. I mean, everything that we did here, we were back and forth for months and months and months on all of it. So what do you think now since we're finished? I think that I am thrilled. I, I think that the whole journey was very exciting. It was. From the get-go of just the conversation on the phone and, and then the, and the unfolding of ideas. You know, I mean, I have somewhat of a mechanical mind and creative mind. And to meet someone else that is on steroids, <laughs> it's exciting to work with you. That's what I'm telling you. And and then and then to come and see it every once in a while, 
physically. It just was always better than, I, how many times I said, this is better than I thought it was going to be. And, and then just being here counseling with you each time and, and coming up with new and better ideas together, I felt sure. like you made me feel part of it. And we're going to SEMA. It's done. We're ready to go. So on that note, check it out on SEMA 2024. It's going to be in the simple green booth. This is a beautiful car. Come check it out. There you guys, you guys have a bunch of stuff to give away to there at the booth. Oh, yeah. So yeah, great. we're the show at and SEMA. Exactly. See you guys 2024. Like, subscribe, smash that like button. Leave some comments down below. Fred, it is a pleasure. We are a month ahead before SEMA, which is an awesome time to turn the car over and say, we're done before SEMA. We'll catch you guys there.